Hey everyone, my name is Sheldon Murray and I want to welcome you to another Buick Outdoor Show. Uh, today I want to talk to you about some spot and stock bear hunting tips uh, up in northern BC. Well, I'd like to start off by uh, just saying that I'm by no means a bear expert. I'm just very fortunate to live in a place where we have a, a lot of bears in this area. Uh, I've been hunting them for about six years now. Uh, but within those six years, I've filled both bear tags every year, so I've shot 12 bears uh, in a very, very short time. Uh, so with that, you know, I'm I'm slowly learning the ropes. You know, you still learn every day, every season. There's always something new that a guy finds out and other things that you read up on or try different tactics that work for other people. So I think today I'm just going to tell you guys kind of how I go about it and, uh, you guys can do what I do or you can do it your own way it's not the only way uh, that's the best part about hunting and fishing and being outdoors it's there's not just one way of doing things you can put your own little twist on it so without further ado here I'll uh, I'll get into how I go about hunting bears well in the springtime I'm always uh, I always get pretty excited about to start chasing bears again uh, especially winters like the one that we just had it's, it was really long cold lots of snow and it uh, it kind of set the bears back by a couple of weeks uh, our season runs April 1st till June 30th uh, I've never seen a bear around April 1st I think the earliest I've ever seen tracks were about April 6th but even that is very early uh, so typically what you have to do with the bears in the spring is you are mainly hunting their food sources uh, the first couple weeks when they're out the only thing that they can really eat is vegetation because their digestive tract isn't going yet so they're not going to be eating any meat or anything for the first week or two uh, and that kind of leaves them with the only option is the poplar buds you'll see the little saplings once they start to come out and kind of turn green a little bit and have a little bit of a fuzz on them You'll see black bears out in the uh, in the tops of poplar trees, chewing on them because it's really the only food that they kind of have at that time. In May, you'll find them eating the green grasses that are starting to grow up uh, on the side of the roads and on pipelines and cut lines. And then, typically, in around June, when the dandelions start to grow, uh, they really start to chew on the dandelions. Uh, we have lots of roads around here where the, the dandelions they grow like crazy on the sides and you pretty well park at the top of the hill and just wait for one to come out like it's it's crazy how many bears around here especially once the dandelions come out uh our fall season it runs from august 15th till november 15th and typically in august uh you'll find them eating clovers and oats uh, especially after there's been a real hard frost and the clovers they uh, they die and they turn black and when they turn black it kind of holds the sugar in the flower so in the bears they really enjoy that uh, come September when all the berries are nice and ripe uh, you'll find bears in the blueberries huckleberries and cranberries like crazy uh, and then come October once is the berries have kind of died from all the hard frost and they've kind of dropped off and they're all on the ground uh, you'll find that the rose hips uh, they're pretty well ripe by then and the bears will uh, start chewing up on all the rose hips well now that I covered their uh, their main food sources uh, really the next thing would be just how to spot them uh, really when you're looking for a bear they stand out a lot uh, you just pretty well look for a big black dark blob uh, bring up your binoculars see if it's a boar or sow uh, a lot of times the only way I can tell the difference between a boar and a sow is if the sow has cubs other than that you know there's expert guides that will be able to give you tips and tricks on on how to sex a bear but for the most part if he has big broad shoulders and a big belly he might be a boar I I really don't know I've been very lucky where I think I've shot one dry sow and the rest have all been boars so in 12 bears I've shot 11 boars one sow but it's 
it's very, very, very hard uh, to figure them out, you know. But uh, one thing too is the equipment that you have, it's going to be good enough. You don't need, you know, Leupold or Vortex or Swarovski. You know, I I have Bushnell spotting scope and Bushnell binoculars. Uh, the amount of money that you spend on your equipment is not going to make you a better hunter. You know, the only thing that's going to make you a better hunter is you. Whether you watch little videos like this and kind of take a little bit of what I tell you or you take tips from somebody else, you know, just kind of learn at your own pace. Don't go out and spend a small fortune on stuff and think that it's just going to make you better because all it's going to do is just make you broke, really. Um, now, when it comes to stocking, again, you don't need anything fancy. If you want to wear camouflage, great, wear it. If you want to wear a $10 Walmart shirt and $30 Walmart pants, it works perfectly fine as long as they're dark. Uh, if it's dark brown or black, it's it works phenomenal as long as you look and act like a bear. Uh, a lot of times, you know, I've crawled to bears from 200 yards and I've crawled up within 15 yards of them. Just because I got on my hands and knees and I just slowly walked or slowly crawled towards them. And if you watch bears enough when they walk, they don't just walk in a straight line. You know, they kind of, they do this kind of thing. And then they stop and they eat a little bit and they get up and they just, they slowly crawl. So as long as you do that and you look like a bear, a uh, bear's eyesight is terrible. So as long as they see a dark object that sort of kind of looks like a bear and it's sort of kind of making movements like a bear, almost anyone can uh, can stalk up to a uh, black bear. So once you get within like 100 yards of a bear and uh, he kind of, he starts to notice you a little bit more and he's getting a little bit nervous and he maybe caught your wind a little bit but he hasn't quite ran off. Uh, bears like to kind of challenge each other. And it's almost like a snort wheeze that uh, deer do. They just kind of do a and that's kind of it. If you do that to him, but then you have to start kind of waddling again, you know, making sure that he goes, okay, that is just another bear, I'm just kind of being paranoid. Then he'll kind of go back, but he'll still keep your eye, his eye on you. Your sense of smell is just phenomenal, so you really, really have to pay attention to your wind direction. Uh, you have to pay attention to the wind regardless from how far you are from them, but especially at that 100 yards and closer because now they've also been watching you this whole time kind of slowly coming into them so they're expecting you to smell like a bear because you look like a bear you act like a bear you sound like a bear but you smell like a human so you know they start to get real nervous and cautious then if they start to smell you so a couple of things that you can use to uh to help out a little bit is like scent eliminator sprays and then also the wind indicators you can get uh, whether it's little bottles of, it's kind of like a talcum powder, uh, there's some where it's just little fluffs of cotton, or if you just grab some grass, throw it in the air, see which way it kind of drifts uh, to really help you out. Because then a lot of times, you know, it would be just the slightest little breeze and you can't quite feel it, but if you spray that little powder stuff or flick the little piece of cotton out, it'll sit there and it'll slowly float, uh, whichever way the wind's blowing. So at any time uh, while you're uh, stalking up to a bear, uh, if they do happen to get your scent or they somebody drives by or whatever and that bear runs off, uh, do not get discouraged. The hunt isn't over. I've had a lot of bears run off and pretty well just 
sit and wait or just kind of tuck into the tree line a little bit and uh, and just wait 10, 15, 20 minutes. Uh, a lot of the time the bear will run in about 20 yards and he'll stop and he'll listen, smell and if everything seems to be okay he'll slowly come back out either right where he ran in or he might be in you know 50 to 100 yards uh, further down and then you just kind of have to start the process uh, all over again. Well, unfortunately, there's a big tanker coming. So, that bear's gonna run off. Hopefully he runs off, we can just walk up there, get a little bit closer to him, and hopefully he comes back out the mow range. Looks like that bear came back out, but he came out that way. He was running up the road, but I don't know, he must have wanted to get downwind of us kind of a thing. But the problem with where he is, <laughs> my truck's right there. Oh, I think what I'm going to do this time is I'm just going to walk straight towards him just on the road. We tried everything else. I mean, I mean, he's already staring at us. If he stays there on the bush line and I stay on the road, when we get directly across from him, he'll be about 30 to 35 yards. So I'll start walking here and just uh, see what happens. <laughs> See, so now we're within 100 yards. This is where it gets a little bit hard. Again, this part is easy. You just walk up the road to it. He's just kind of slowly walking away from us. Well, got back to the truck. Guess who's out again? Look at that, it's a dirty sucker. Just proves my point again that if you spook a bear off, just wait and he comes back out. He was, oh, that's, that's probably about 200 yards from where he went in at. I've had a lot of people ask me uh, just what kind of a caliber I'd recommend for them to hunt bears with and really what it comes down to is the gun that you already have. Uh, you're comfortable with it, you know where it's shooting, it's not a great big huge cannon, it's not going to make you flinch, so you're going to be able to make a good shot with it. Really anything 243 and up is what you need. Uh, the main key factor is shot placement and bullet type. 
uh, with your bullets, you're, you definitely need something that's designed for doing deep penetration. Uh, I like to use nozzle partitions or those Browning BXE bullets. They're both, you know, they're both specifically made for penetrating. When it comes to your shot placement, I've heard I don't know how many people say shoot a bear in the shoulder and they can't run away. If you hit a bear in the shoulder, he's going to absorb all that energy and he's just going to be a mad bear. It's going to cause an infection and he's either going to slowly die from blood poisoning or pus getting in to his blood or he's going to live with a screwed up shoulder. The only time that really works is if you have one of them big, big huge cannons. But really nobody enjoys shooting a 375 H and H or a 460 or a 458. So just choose your shots wisely, choose your bullets wisely, and for the best shot placement, uh, one thing I heard was in the middle of the middle. So if you take a bear's body, you make a line down the middle of his body this way, and, and then down in the middle there, right where those two lines intercept is where you want to shoot them. It looks like it's a lot further back, but uh, you still hit the vitals. Uh, the only thing is, when they're quartering away from you or towards you, you really got to watch where that bullet is traveling. So uh, if they're going, if they're quartering away from you, shoot just a little bit further back. That way it'll go in and you'll still get both lungs and it'll kind of come out over here. If they're coming towards you, it's a really tricky spot because you either hit them in the shoulder, but the way their shoulder are and the way that their muscles are, it'll hit and he'll just absorb all that. Uh, energy but if you can get them kind of right in here again it'll go in and it'll go through both vitals or both lungs and get some vitals uh, another thing you can do is if they're on a pipeline and they're on a bit of a hill and they're feeding towards you and they have their head down is put your crosshairs right between his ears and pick up a little bit so when you shoot them it almost hits them right between the shoulder blades and then that way it goes through and it breaks their spine and there's a good chance that you hit them in the heart. Uh, another shot that you can do if they are standing up and facing you is if you hit them right in the center of their chest. That way it goes through their heart and then just the shock of that bullet going in it'll screw up their lungs to it just kind of turn them to mush and then if the bullet does exit out the back uh, there's a really good chance that you'll hit the spine and it just kills them instantly so there's absolutely no suffering whatsoever you don't damage any meat other than a little bit of a uh, little bit of the back straps uh, so spotting and stalking black bears you know it's a uh, it's a great way to introduce new hunters into the sport of hunting there's bears almost anywhere that you go and then uh, you know there's not overly too much hunting pressure on them either so you know when they see people they're not overly too scared of you uh, and also with the type of gun that you can use you know a kid shooting a 243 with a proper bullets proper shot placement would have no problem whatsoever killing his first bear uh, so after you have harvested a bear uh, you want to take care of the meat and the hide when it comes to the proper way of skinning a bear for a rug I don't know much about it because every bear I've shot I've always just shot it for the meat and the hide and paws they just get left behind in the bush for something else to eat on it uh, but if you talk to your local taxidermist or check out some other video on YouTube or or find uh, somebody else that actually knows what they're doing you know maybe talk to a guide an outfitter they'll be able to let you know uh, so one final thing I want to mention is when you decide to uh, to cook up your bear, uh, you have to make sure that you cook it to a minimal of 160 degrees Fahrenheit, because with bears they can carry trichinosis. It's a little parasite. It's the same parasite that's in pigs. So before you kind of turn your nose to bear, saying all oh, they got parasites, well, so do pigs. Uh, I just googled it so I know exactly what it is here for uh, symptoms, but uh, it'll cause nausea diarrhea, abdominal cramps, uh, muscle pain, weakness, fever, headache, and sometimes inflammation of other organs. Uh, but 
I've been eating it for six years now. I've never had it, but I also check everything that I cook. Whether I'm making a roast, meatloaf, if I made salami, pepperoni, it don't matter what I cook with it. I always make sure that it is at least 160 Fahrenheit. Uh, some people say that you can get it through cuts on your hand and stuff. So if you want to wear gloves, give her. I don't. And but I mean I've never got it, so I don't really think it'll uh, happen. But you never know, I guess. Better be safe than sorry. But anyways, I want to thank you for watching this video, and I hope it uh, inspires you to go out and get a bear tag. Maybe bring your wife or your kid along with you, and see if you guys can get a couple of bears. Thanks for watching.